this is Ann Yorks from Flowerbox Bakery, and today we're going to be making my favorite cookie, the peacock cookie. Here's what you need. You're going to need a few colors of piping icing, royal blue, teal, and green. And you'll also need a scribe tool, or a toothpick would work as well. And you'll need some flood icing, or 10 second icing. You'll need teal, royal blue, gold, purple, white, and black. As you can see, I have about 12 ounces of teal, about eight ounces of royal blue, and about two ounces of the gold, purple, white, and black. I'm making 12 cookies, and that will be enough icing for this project. I'm using flood bottles, so I have a squeeze bottle, and I also have a couple bottles with PME tips. I have a number three tip on the gold icing, a number two tip on the royal blue icing, and a number one tip on the purple because I'm going to be making varying size dots on the cookie design. And today's cookie design, we are using the Peacock Princess Cookie Cutter designed by Flowerbox Bakery, available on our website. To get started, we are going to outline the peacock's body onto the cookie. Usually, I use a copy cake which projects the image onto the cookie. I'll show you an alternative way to create the design without a copy cake by tracing it onto the cookie using a food marker. All right, let's get started. Here we go. Let's flip this on. I'm going to outline the body using the royal blue and I'm using a piping consistency icing. That's a number two tip on my icing bag. This peacock body outline is also available and you should have received a copy of it with your video download. If you don't have a copy cake, you can cut the image out on paper and using a food marker, you can trace the image onto the cookie. I like using a light colored marker so that it doesn't show through the icing once the cookie is flooded. And there you go. You can outline it by tracing over the cookie using the piping icing. I like to use the copy cake, or in this case, trace the image onto the cookie so that it has a consistent body shape from cookie to cookie. I'm going to pipe the outline of the feather. I'm just doing a smooth outline this time, but you could also do a scalloped edge as well. As you can see, I'm not dragging my tip along the cookie. I drop an icing anchor, and then as I move the icing around the cookie, oops, I just broke my icing line. I had an air bubble in the bag. I'm gonna use my fix-it stick and clean off the mistake. Then I'm going to bump my icing back up against where I left off and finish the outline. There we go. Nobody will notice that little mistake. And I'll finish the cookie and drop an anchor at the end of the design. Here's one more time. Next, I'm going to start flooding in the design. I'll start with the feathers first since that's in the background of the design and the body's in the foreground. Plus, I also plan to add some sparkle to this design and I don't want it on the peacock's body. So I'm going to flood the background first, add the details, add the disco dust, and then come back and finish the peacock's body. I like a nice full flood, so I flood around the edge of the cookie and then fill in the inside, leaving almost no cookie showing. Then I wiggle the icing into place, popping any bubbles, getting it up against the outline, and making sure things look nice and even. I'm careful not to go over the outline so that I don't flood into the other section of the cookie. Usually, I like to do two at a time. It allows the icing to set up just a little bit so that when I add my wet on wet details, the icing that I'm adding doesn't spread or dissipate and it holds its shape. 
Now that the teal is flooded in, I'm going to add the feather details. I'm going to add three different colored dots. The first one, the largest dot, is the gold. I have a number three tip on the bottle, and I'll add that color first. I like to start adding the dots in the middle. That way, I can keep the design looking even on both sides of the peacock. As you can see, the dots are melting into the background layer since both icings are still wet. Now I'll add the blue dot. This bottle has a number two tip on it. Instead of adding the dot in the center of the gold, I actually add it on the edge to help create a feathered look. And then just a small dot of purple using a number one tip. Again, not in the center of the blue dot, but on the edge. Then I pull my scribe through, creating a marbled feather look, pulling down from the outside of the cookie toward the peacock body. I do like to wipe my scribe off occasionally as working to keep it clean and to keep the colors from over mixing. Time to add a little sparkle. I'm going to give my pump brush a few pumps to get the glitter into the bristles. These cookies were in front of a fan, so it's safe to just brush on the sparkles. But the cookies on the right side are still wet, so I'm actually just going to shake that glitter onto the cookie. Once the background is dry, I go in and flood the peacock's body. You'll see that there are some little spaces, like in the peacock's beak, that are too tiny for my tip to fit. That's okay. I don't feel like I need to get all the way in there. I'll actually use my scribe to wiggle the icing into place and pull it through to the tip. When I'm flooding this second color, I'm also careful not to flood over the outline. I flood in holding the bottle at an angle so that the icing sits inside the outline and creates a dimensional look. While the blue icing is still wet, I go ahead and add the eye. I add a large dot of white using a number two tip and then a small dot of black using a number one tip. While it's wet, I pull my scribe through the front and also through the back of the eye to create an elegant look to the peacock. I wipe my scribe in between so I don't get a white dot in the center of the peacock's eye. Once the body's dry, I add the detail. I add three lines with a miniature heart at the top for the plume, and then I add four scalloped lines to create a feathered look on the body of the peacock. When creating this scallop, I find myself getting into a little rhythm. I do like the scallop line to be thin, so I have a number one tip on the green icing. Time to make these peacocks walk. Let's add some legs. Just two lines down, and then I add a teardrop up to create a little foot detail. Easy and cute. And there you have it, my favorite cookie design, the peacock, all finished and ready to go. I hope you'll enjoy making these cookies as much as I did. For more tips, tutorials, and supplies, please visit flowerboxbakery.com. Thanks and happy decorating.